Hi, welcome to the USS Silversides Museum. I'm one of the tour guides here on board the Silversides. I apologize for not being submarine museum. This is your 4 inch 50 caliber deck gun. We are now in the superstructure of the submarine. This is your 4 inch 50 caliber. You'd have three men, you have three men sitting on these stools behind you and the gun loader injecting the signal into the ram into the uh, breech. You'd also have the crew sitting here on the on this next seat over here. One would be rotating the gun, the other one would be elevating it, the other one would be pushing the ammo into the breech. As you come around here, we're now looking forward to the submarine. Here is your ammunition scuttle and your two watertight compartments that you control that uh, had 12 rounds of the 50 caliber, 50 inch caliber ammo. Right. Below you here is Mike Harbin. Mike Harbin was killed on his first war patrol. During a gun action, Mike was a torpedo man third class. As of the app, uh, as we move forward, here's the ammunition scuttle. They would pass the ammunition from down below. I'll explain that later on. They would exit from this hatch during gun action and come up, hand the weapons to the men, and they would fire them. And this is the ammunition lockers right here. They were also watertight and were able to withstand uh, water pressures. As you move here, you have your depth charge indicator. The depth charge indicator, would, sounding indicator, would let you know where the depth charges were falling so that the commanding officer could make evasive maneuvers. They're placed all along the side of the hall and on both sides of the conning tower. As you move up forward, you have your 40 millimeter anti-aircraft gun. And this is your anti-aircraft gun. You could take out small naval vessels as well as uh, enemy vessels. Your 4 inch 50 caliber could take out the McLean over there, which is our Coast Guard cutter with one shot, and she could also attack a vessel 20 miles away. As you move up here and you look above the conning tower superstructure here, you're going to see the 40 caliber and then you're going to see the target bearing transmitter located here. This is where you could fire an aft torpedoes from the target bearing transmitter, click the button, and it would send the information to the torpedo data computer in the conning tower. So they would use that one here, and then you also have one here, which is located forward of the bridge. Above you here is the lookout shears. These are where the lookout towers were. This is where the men stood their watch. The little antenna with the, the, the antenna here is the SD radar antenna, and that would detect incoming air, enemy aircraft. The periscope that is lowered is the attack periscope. The one that is raised is the observation periscope. That was for detecting aircraft above the water, but it could also be used as attack periscope if the attack periscope was lost. Above here, you see the football-shaped radar. That's the SJ-1 radar, and that was the most advanced of the war at the time. As you move forward, Silversides is an historic national landmark. She was designated that in 1986 by the National Park Service and the United States Department of the uh, Interior of the Park Commission. As you move forward here, you can see a, a different outlook of the bridge and different requirements up there. As you move forward here, you have, um, as well, this is a crew open spacing hatch. This was for crew access, for carrying storage, and free flooding of the submarine as well. As we move along the bulkhead, we have the USS Oversides life raft. She took, she rescued two down flyers and sank 16 sea mines. She also sunk all these vessels here. The ones in the white with the red meatball are merchant ships and the other ones are, are uh, warships. She also got the presidential unit citation and she also got this, uh, the Silver Star as well. Uh, damaged is down here below. So these are the ships that were damaged and these were the ships that were sunk. She's their third highest surviving submarine to survive the war. This is also an air radar loop, uh, an air antenna, uh, radar antenna to detect incoming signals of radar from aircraft and ships. 236 would not have been on the hull during the war. She would not have had any lettering identifying herself of what type of submarine she actually was. As you move forward here, you have your 40 millimeter anti-aircraft gun as well. And then if you look through the bridge superstructure, you can see parts of the bridge 
in there as well. It's in a little bit of access, and the captain had his own chair, as well as the executive officer and the officer of the deck. And there's the superstructure above the submarine with the uh, attack periscope being lowered and the observation periscope sticking up. As you move forward here, here's, an up, here's another depth charge indicator, and as well as the whistle and more watertight compartments. And above here is the SJ-1 radar and the other radar loop for the SD antenna. As you, and there's the, uh, and that's looking forward to the bridge. And then as you zoom in, you can also see the uh, target bearing transmitter apparatus. Again, click the button, and it would send the coordinates to the target data computer, torpedo data computer in the uh, county tower. As you move forward here, you see two, two torpedoes outside the USS Silverside Submarine Museum, which is the outer sud, uh, uh, the outer of the museum here, as well as the USS Drum 2228 uh, County Tower and Bridge, so that uh, kids can play on. And then you also have the Mark 14 torpedo as well. They would load this torpedo with cranes and come down this ammo loading chute down here. And this, when this got wet, it became a grease-like substance. They would use uh, tackle and chains by putting these on tackle and chains. Open up this door down here below, and they would slide the torpedo in. As you come forward here, this is your JP sonar uh, hydrophone that would detect uh, enemy vessels. This could rotate just down below like that. And a good sonar operator could detect the vessels about 20 miles out, between 1 and 20 miles, depending on how good you were. They could detect how many props were on the ship, how many propellers they had, how fast it was going, how many ships were in the convoy, if they were carriers, warships, battleships, all that could be discovered. Alright, as we prepare to enter the submarine, watch your head as we go in. The next scene you'll see is the four torpedo room. Please watch your step.